Hi everyone, this is Jason Matthew from Weekend EduTech and today we're going to be taking a high level look at Microsoft PowerPoint interface. So we're going to start at the top left and you see there's auto save and if we enable that it's going to ask me to first name the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, in this case we just put something like interface and it's saving in my OneDrive and I click save. And it's going to upload it and the great thing about auto save it means that any changes i make to this powerpoint presentation it's powerpoint is going to automatically save it in my onedrive and believe me from my experience i strongly recommend this way of saving because of two things one it removes that fear of you losing data because you forgot to save something Trust me, it has saved me a lot of tears in the past. And the other thing that's great about saving into the OneDrive is that you have better version control. To the right of that, we have the quick access toolbar. And if you have used Microsoft Word or Microsoft Excel, you'll be familiar with the quick access toolbar. It's just tools that you tend to commonly use that you have quick access to. So by default, you have the, the home tool where you can, if you click on that, you're going to go to the home start screen. You can save and you have the undo and redo buttons. So those are the tools that come by default on the quick access toolbar. But if you click on the three dots, the ellipses, you can customize your quick access toolbar. So let's click on that. And you can see there, I can click on new or send presentation or print or spelling. So if these are tools that you tend to access a lot, then you can click on them. So for instance, let's say I do a lot of printing. I'm going to click on the print and you see it comes up on the quick access toolbar there. Now, if you don't see the command that you're looking for, then you can click on more commands. And when you click on more commands, you have this option. It's further separated into popular commands or commands not in the ribbons, all commands and so on. So there are the different ways in which they have broken down the different commands that PowerPoint do. And you can go through that and find a tool that you want on your quick access toolbar. And like let's say for instance, it was cut. I can then click on the arrow that will bring it over to the quick access toolbar. And once I click on save, now oh, that's XO for this. You see it's there on the quick access toolbar. And just uh, as a quick one, I'm just gonna click on ellipses, go to more commands again. Now we were looking at the quick access toolbar. You could also customize the general ribbon if you wanted as well. So I'm gonna cancel out. Also, now that I've added the printer, I've added the cut tool. Let's say that I don't want those things there anymore. I want to reset the quick access toolbar. I go back to the three ellipses. I go to more commands and I can either like, for instance, click on the print tool and then click on the arrow to bring it over to the left hand side. Or if I want to reset the entire quick access toolbar, I can click on the ellipses at the bottom and then I can reset the quick access toolbar and then I can click yes and then I save and I come out of it X off and as you can see it goes back to the default quick access toolbar that you have in the middle of your PowerPoint screen there if I click on the drop down arrow you see there I can name the presentation I've already done it before but you can do it again and you can also decide what place you want to put the the file so in this case it's in my documents folder in my OneDrive and if I go to the far right to the top right there if I click on this icon I can actually send feedback to Microsoft if I like something if I don't like something and if I have a suggestion just below that there's the comments so if you had made comments previously through all the PowerPoint if I click on the comments there I can see a, a pane a comments pane coming up where we'll have all the comments that you would have made throughout the presentation but in this case this is a brand new presentation so there's nothing there so far so I can X off on that. And then I can also share this presentation with other people. Now mind you, if you're, if you're thinking about sharing a presentation, then you definitely have to save it in your OneDrive. And once you save in your OneDrive, you can click on share. And you see I have a few options, invite people. I can copy the link and then email it out. Or if I want, I can even send it via email using the email client that's attached to this PowerPoint. Okay, so now we go to the main ribbon. And in the main ribbon panel, there's a host of ribbons that are there. And each ribbon has a group of tools that allow 
chronologically grouped together. So for instance, under the home ribbon, you can do layouts and you can arrange the slides and so on. Under insert, you can insert pictures and shapes and icons. Under draw, this will be important for like if you have a touch screen, you can draw stuff on it. Under design, you can choose different themes. Transitions is where you can have some interesting things happening when you go from one slide to another. Animations, this is where you can animate different elements like text and objects on your slides. You have slideshow where you have presenter view and you can play from the start and there's some really cool in options there. Under review, you have where you can check accessibility, you have spelling checks as well. This is where you could add comments, you could show the comments. Under view, you can see the notes that you have created. And under record, you have different where you can add video, you can add audio. Now, don't worry, we're going to go into a lot of details for each of these ribbons in subsequent videos. One of the cool things about this main ribbon here is that it's very intuitive. It adapts according to what you're doing. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say I add a few more slides. And in one of the slides, let's make it blank and let's insert a picture and don't worry about this we're going to be going to more details in subsequent videos let's keep your eye on the main ribbon now look at what happens if i just add an image into the slide you see now there's a picture format that comes up because you have added an image and there you have all kind of different things where I can remove the background. I can make color corrections. I can add artistic effects. I could change the transparency of the image I've just added. So that ribbon there is very intuitive and it adapts depending on what you're doing in that particular slide. So on the left, there's this slide panel and it has all the slides that you have created so far. And you see there are numbers. So this is the number one. That's the first slide, which tends to be your title slide. And should I start typing in there? Title. You see it. The changes I'm making in that slide is you can also see it happening in the slide panel. And that slide panel, I can actually make smaller or I can make it wider, depending on your preferences. And I can go to slide two. And as you see here, there are placeholders, but there's nothing there because only when I start typing, then will the slide on the slide panel be affected. So at the bottom of that slide, you can actually put notes. So this will be notes that the presenter will put there for the presenter to remember about that particular slide. So the, the audience is not going to be seeing those notes, but you can put notes as the presenter. So you'll see how useful that will be in a subsequent video. And you also have comments, which we looked at before. You can see all the comments that was made in the presentation. And then you have like where you could see the normal view. And you can also do the slide sorter, which I think is very useful. So if you click on those four squares icon there, you can see all the slides and you can move them around. And you can click back on the four dots to go back to the normal view. You can also zoom out or zoom in to the slide by controlling this slider here. And whether you zoom out or you zoom in as much as possible, you can always have the slide fit that space by clicking on this icon here. So this was just a quick introduction to Microsoft PowerPoint's interface. Uh, please look at the subsequent videos where I go into more detail on how we use each of these ribbons to create some really fantastic presentations. So please like, subscribe, and keep viewing. So until next time, take care. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.